You know that uh, fellow, he's known as a potty mouth. He, he, he's no longer on terrestrial radio, but he's been over on satellite radio for years. His name is Howard Stern. Back during the 1980s and 1990s, he called himself the king of all media. He did have a popular syndicated radio show before he went to satellite. Now, Stern has been known as being a little bit of a provocateur and a little over the top and a little bit too racy for most audiences. But I've always thought that deep down in was the soul of a conservative. I want to share something that he had to say on his show yesterday with you in just a moment. But first, a reminder, hearing these radio shows, any of them and any of these clips, of course, is important in your life. And that means you need to have really solid hearing in order to continue to do that. Our friends over at uh, Mott Harrison Audiology in Rupert, which is run by Dr. Christine Pickup, they're now the only locally owned independent hearing health care practice in southern Idaho. And Dr. Pickup reminds you that your hearing health and your brain health are connected. At Mount Harrison Audiology, she has been studying the research on cognitive health and hearing. The most recent findings prove that when hearing loss is addressed with hearing aids, the effects of cognitive decline are greatly diminished. Hearing is critical for communication, for connection to others, and for overall well-being. Now's the time to improve your hearing. You can call Mount Harrison Audiology for an appointment today. That telephone number, 208 312 0957. This is Howard Stern speaking on his uh, satellite radio show yesterday. I've had to heavily edit this. It is Howard Stern after all, but he's trying to make a comparison to what modern liberals are thinking. Let's say I walked up to a sheep, literally a sheep herd, and they know that at night, every night, the wolves pick off a couple of them. What if I went up to the sheep and I said, you want to have a shot at the wolves? I'm going to give you a pistol. You can actually even the playing field with these wolves whose fangs are out. You could shoot them and save your family. Well, bah, we're not going to do that. We don't want to fight back. He didn't hurt us. He only hurt the family down the street. And the and the shepherd will protect us. The sheep dogs are out there. They'll protect us. Well, the sheep dogs are protecting you, but some of them can't be with you. Well, they, there's not a sheep dog for every citizen, and a wolf is still eating one of you every night. Bah! I know what. Let's remove all the guns from the sheep. What? There's an idea. Let's take back all the guns from the people who might be willing to shoot the wolves. So then you go, wait a second. What if we had a completely gun-free zone? Now, I'm going to tell you about the most gun-free zone on the planet. It happened during 9-11. It was on a plane. You know you can't get a gun on a plane. It's completely gun-free. So what did the wolves do? They said, this is great. We'll just kill the sheep with box cutters. There you go. So all of you gun confiscators out there, uh, there's the approach. We'll, 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 they'll just kill us with something else, and we won't be able to def defend ourselves. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. That was Howard Stern, of course, speaking on his program yesterday. You're listening to News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill, a quick comment and then a question. My wife, uh, who is very a, a lovely lady, and she hates confrontation, and she sometimes doesn't even tell me things, and she was sitting there the other day while your program was on and told me, she went to Ross the other day, and the Muslim women had the shoe department barricaded off. And my wife is hardly, she's, she's the sweetest thing you'll ever meet. And he, she tried to excuse herself to go in and check some shoes out, and they wouldn't let her in. And they, were, they gave her dirty looks. They wouldn't acknowledge her. Finally, she just gave up. They, had just, they were so rude and had absolutely no reason to be. And it just, I said, well, why didn't you say something? And she says, well, I don't want to cause trouble. And I says, well, they do. So she's at CSI at a meeting. Okay, and she's, there's a gentleman back there, a Muslim gentleman with a backpack. And she says, I felt very uneasy with him there. And uh, he had a backpack. He kept reaching into it. And the look on his face, you would not know that he, well, what he was thinking. And all of a sudden, he, you know, he took off his shoes turned around and faced the wall and started bowing. I guess this is preparation for prayer or whatever it is. I don't know. Those are the comments. Now, this is the question. I heard that three Muslim young men raped a young white girl at an apartment complex in Twin, raped her and urinated on her, and I never heard a word about it. 
Well, and maybe maybe videotaped it as well, and I'm working on confirming it, uh, but I do not have confirmation yet, and so I've been holding off on any details that I have. Man, oh man, this is in Twin. This is Twin Falls, folks. My daughter goes to school at ISU, and she's trying to be friendly to the Muslim women, and she she gets well. She gets. You just can't. If, it, it's if, not working. I'm going to hang up. And I thank you. If five year olds indeed are being raped in public housing in Twin Falls then I think this program has to come to an end. And I think this is what we predicted. Remember when we were all being called racists and bigots, and we said, well, you know, this is going to happen. And when this happens, who is going to say, I'm sorry? Is this an acceptable loss? If this was your daughter, would it be an acceptable loss? Now, again, I don't want to start a firestorm here because I have not been able to confirm it. I've made a few phone calls, asked questions of a few people, And it could well be just an urban legend at this point. And if it turns out to be more, then we'll share more of it. But at the moment, uh, this is about the best we can do, and I don't want to be a rumor monger who inflames people to the point where we end up with some unnecessary violence if it's it's not certainly called for. 20 minutes now away from 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 55. You may recall that months ago when this debate was raging about refugees coming to Twin Falls and the Magic Valley, we had a candidate, a Democrat, running for state legislature who did, a, did an interview with a local newspaper and said, well, she couldn't understand the opposition and said, we aren't those kind of people. In other words, we're not opponents. We aren't, we aren't bigots and racists. And we... Now, I didn't call her names or do anything like that, but I just said, who is, who is she talking about when she says we? And then I pointed out that in her neighborhood, they won't have any of these issues because these people won't be living anywhere near where she lives in her swanky house. But on the other hand, if somebody else is harmed you know, across town in, in one of the other neighborhoods, you know, where that white trash lives that I claim I'm looking to help out as a Democrat, yeah, it's, it's, it's their problem, it's not mine. And I said that this is the direction that this will go. And everyone said, they denounced me at public meetings, folks. I mean, I have to live in this community, too, as well. They, people went to public meetings at CSI and City Hall and various places in this community. And they denounced me and they, they called the radio station and they tried to put pressure on management and say that you got to get rid of this guy. Because, gee, he's hurting people's feelings. But I said these things would happen. And, and, and being a prophet doesn't make you wrong, doesn't make you a bigot, doesn't make you mean-spirited. It's just saying that this is, we were playing with fire is what I was saying. 56 right now at 845. You're on the air with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310 com. Go ahead. Oh, good morning, Bill. You know, anybody that's been living in this country for the last seven years and hasn't had their head buried in the sand, it, it's obvious that this guy in the White House is a, a jihadist terrorist. He, he hates America. He's anti-Christ, anti-anything that is right and good. And my question is, where are all these people who have taken the oath to uphold this, uh, to defend this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic? Well... I guess they're waiting on the sidelines to see which way the wind is blowing. It sure seems like it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Bill. Hey, thank you much for the telephone call. 846, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Ted Cruz. Gosh, how I would long for him as being the Republican nominee for president. Ted Cruz spoke yesterday on the floor of the U.S. Senate responding to the liberal filibuster on gun confiscation following Orlando. That they would suggest this attack was yet another isolated incident, one lone criminal not connected to any global ideology, not connected to any global jihad. And that even worse, they would try to use it as an excuse to go after the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens. Madam President, I wish when we predicted that that we had been proven incorrect. But this week played out all too predictably. Yesterday, we saw a political show on the Senate floor. Democrat after Democrat standing for hours incensed, not at ISIS, incensed not at radical Islamic terrorism, incensed 
that Americans have a right to keep and bear arms. This is political distraction. This is political gamesmanship. And I think the American people find it ridiculous that in response to a, an, an ISIS terror attack, the Democrats go on high dungeon that we've got to restrict the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens. This is not a gun control issue. This is a terrorism issue. And it is nothing less than political gamesmanship for them to try to shift for their favorite hobby horse of taking away the Bill of Rights from law-abiding citizens. And again, that Second Amendment was there so that you could defend yourself not only against tyranny, but against people, anybody who might do you harm. And we have people out there, and it might be a growing threat. According to the CIA director, it is a growing threat, contradicting his own boss over at the White House during testimony yesterday. I have this from Pat Buchanan, the syndicated columnist and a one-time presidential candidate, writing at his website today. Is Islamic terror America's future? I'm going to jump down about five paragraphs here and pick it up. Buchanan writes, as Jerry Sieb of the Wall Street Journal notes, in the 15 years since 9-11, just 95 Americans have died in jihadist attacks in the U.S. Yet one atrocity in Orlando, where 49 were slaughtered, polarized the nation, brought the presidential candidates to savaging one another, and held a national TV audience spellbound for a week. The whole world is talking about Orlando, and Buchanan writes, what did this victory cost the Islamic State? Zero. What Omar Mateen did, suicide bombers do every day in Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan, kill dozens of innocent people while shouting, Allahu Akbar! Yet compare the returns from this act of Islamic terror in Orlando to those from similar attacks in Kabul, Baghdad, or Damascus. And he wonder then, he writes, ISIS would implore its followers to strike where they are, inside the United States, inside Europe, and not come to Syria to die anonymously. He's bringing this up because I think he's pointing out to us they have seen the reaction in this country. They have seen how this has divided the country. And this is now going to be their new M.O. They're going to be coming for us, friends, because they realize this is far more disruptive than anything they do anywhere else around the world. Ten minutes now from 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. On News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. This is the type of people we are dealing with. Now, we have two choices. And I'm, I, the libertarian perspective says if we, we didn't get involved around the world and we just bring everyone home, we wouldn't have to do this. We wouldn't have these troubles. Now, we would abandon Israel and we would abandon a lot of our allies in the Far East. Uh, we would tell them, you're on your own. And there are a great many Americans who think, well, that's probably what we're going to have to do anyway because we can't afford to continue to be the world's policemen. And for all those people to say, no, that'll leave us like sitting ducks, the response is usually, Brazil hasn't been in a war in 150 years or more. Brazil does not have troops all over the world. Brazil is not. I'm just telling you, there is a, there is a logical argument for coming home and doing nothing and becoming isolationist and doing what's good for America first. And it's a very logical argument, but it means that you also have to turn a blind eye to the disgusting things that people do around the world to other people. This is from the Christian Post. <sighs> Listen to this headline. ISIS beheads four-year-old girl, then forces mother to soak hands in daughter's blood. Islamic State terrorists have beheaded a four-year-old girl in the group Syrian stronghold of Raqqa and forced her mother to soak her hands in her daughter's blood, an Iranian news outlet has reported. And this is a quote. A mother told her four-year-old daughter to go home, and she refused, and then the mother told her unintentionally, go home, and I swear to God that I will behead you if you don't, unquote. Reminds me of when my mother would get angry sometimes, and she'd get so angry she'd scream, I'm going to bash your skull in. Well, she didn't really mean it. It just, she was rather descriptive. The writer goes on to say, the woman recalled, quote, and one of the ISIS members heard this and told the mother, since you swore to God you should behead her, uh, but the mother strongly opposed, unquote. In other words, they, the, the ISIS soldier overheard this and said, well, you just swore, so you've got to do it. You just said, I swear to God, so you've got to, you've got to chop your daughter's head off. When the mother refused, the Syrian woman said ISIS militants took it upon themselves to execute the child. 
four-year-old girl. Now, of course, they've been tying explosives to little boys. There was one man ISIS was angry with a few months ago, and they were getting ready to kill him. And while he was uh, he was still alive, they dragged out his uh, his little boy, about five years old, chopped all the boy's fingertips off in front of his dad so his dad could sit there wailing about the torture being done to his son. And then they tied explosives to the little boy and blew him up so they could destroy all of his internal organs and just wipe him out before they executed dad. Yes, we could. We could walk away from all of this. And perhaps we will. But at some point, if this cancer starts spreading around the world, then it does become an issue that is important to us. Now, we didn't get involved until World War II, until the attack on Pearl Harbor. By that time, there were already 10, 15 million dead in Europe, many of them just innocents who had nothing other than been born, was their only crime, and been born perhaps to the wrong race. 853, Bill Cowley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. It's 57. This is from The Resurgent. Despicable, the title says, Taliban using teenage boys as bait to kill. Afghan police pedophiles. And the writer Steve Berman says, I'm not sure who is more despicable. The Afghan police who on a regular basis practice what's called bakabazi, that it's raping teenage boys or the Taliban who are sending the boys to kill them. In fairness, he writes, to the evil Taliban, when they were in power, they did more to end boy sex slavery than America has ever done. In fact, we had, a what was it, a captain in the U.S. military who was uh, going to be drummed out of the military because he smacked one of these Afghan policemen who was raping little boys. He heard it going on all night long, he heard the boy screaming. So he went in there and he did what any normal red-blooded American would do. He beat the living tar out of the pedophile. And then the military said, Aha! You're a very bad man for encroaching on their culture. Look, their culture is Stone Age, twisted, and, and despicable. Something needs to be done. Or just pack up all of our people and bring them home and ignore it. Those are our choices. Pick one. You can reach our program today by dialing 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Bill Colley with you today on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. This is Chris Cox. He is with the NRA, executive director, speaking with Sean Hannity last night. And the NRA, which has had, according to the left, a real stranglehold on Washington for many, many years, not really true, and he's addressing that, and he also is talking about why the Democrats are hoping to use this as a distraction. We are facing a crisis, and the crisis is not over the Second Amendment or over guns. The crisis is over the fact that we have radical Islamic terrorists in this country trying to kill as many Americans as they can. So the question becomes, what are we going to do about it? We can go down the path of gun control. They have every gun control law imaginable in California, but it didn't stop the terrorists in you San know, Chris, Bernardino. I have had most of my adult life, I've had a license to carry in Rhode Island, California, Alabama, Georgia, New York. I have carried it since my 20s. I've been carrying a weapon. Um, if an incident like San Bernardino, Chattanooga, or uh, in the case of Orlando ever happens, I would want somebody like me, somebody who's been well-trained, I'm a marksman, uh, I've learned gun safety since I'm 11 years old. I would want an opportunity to maybe help save lives. When this guy dropped a clip, if there was a responsible armed American there, maybe some people's lives could have been saved. What part of that does the left not understand? Well, Sean, I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. All of us want to make sure that people are safe. All of us want to live in safe communities. But as you mentioned, bad things happen. And to think that one more gun control law is going to stop a jihadist from carrying out his quest for martyrdom is not just absurd, it's dangerous. It's Chris Cox speaking on Hannity's program on the Fox News Channel last night. Cox, the executive director of the National Rifle Association. 857, Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. On News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Just a quick reminder next week on the program, middle of the week, uh, Wednesdays, we do this between 8 30 and 9 o'clock. We sit down and have a, a brief, what I call respite from some of the worst uh, abuses of talk radio. <laughs> At least it's a bit more upbeat, far more upbeat. We talk about health, but we talk about positive things about health. It's called Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. 
And what we do is have a medical professional come in from Tripp Family Medicine, and we have a discussion about a particular medical topic. We invite your telephone calls as well if you've got a question or comment for the doctor or the uh, the nurse practitioner or one of the physician assistants. Uh, you can give us a shout during the course of the program. Also, Dr. Tripp is going on a mission trip in uh, well later this summer with some members of his family, and they're looking to collect toiletries to take along to the jungles of Nicaragua. And they're asking if you can help out. Please drop by the office, which is on Fillmore Street in here, uh, yeah, in here, right here in Twin Falls. We'll get that right here in Twin Falls, directly across from the main post office on the north side of the city. And also his boys are looking to earn a little extra money to pay their cost for the trip. So they're willing to help you out around your home with perhaps mowing the yard, cleaning the pool, cleaning out a garage. Feel free to drop, draw, drop into the doctor's office and get all of that clarified. Maybe hire someone, too, for a little outdoor work. In the meantime, one more hour of Top Story is just ahead. Bill Colley with you this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com. And uh, got a couple of things, perhaps more on the local level to chat about, too, coming up in a few minutes on the program. Gosh, if we get to this, I love to, to go to football games. I hate it when there's a drunk near me when I'm trying to watch the game. Looks like the uh, state of Idaho's Board of Education has remedied that issue. That's on the way. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com.